Then I put that moisture meter through either mulch pile, 85 degrees. So you see what four inches of mulch will do? Besides, it's feeding the microbial activity and everything, and the earthworm is working and it's building the soil, perforating the soil, and nutrients now are leaching out of that decomposing mulch and going down. You see, it's a natural environment. Right. See how beautiful nature is designed? This is over in San Marcos. County agent over at Cliff Cash, he would always get me to come talk to his master gardeners and his FFA and 4-H. Well, I always promoted compost and mulch all the time. Well, Cliff had a little farm, but there was no water on that farm to be to irrigate with. There's none piped in, there's none drill for. Cliff always to learn peach orchard, and he paid attention to my program. He would see this. After about four or five years, Cliff kept saying, Matt, we've got to come see my peach trees. Matt, we've got to come see my peach trees. I mulch. I come see my peach trees. Well, time went on. I never went over it. So after about six years, I told my wife, I said, well, I was giving a talk in San Marcos. I said, let's find Cliff. Lift up his phone number and said, I want to come see your peach. <laughs> when I drove up, he had his peaches like this. What he did, he, he, he took all the subsoil out of the middle and put it on mound. And I was expecting to see a, do uh, a dozen or more trees with mulch. You know how many trees he has like this in an area where there's no irrigation? I mean, 1,200. Oh. 1,200 trees. Hello. Just about finished. Oh, eleven? No, yeah. ten to eleven. Anyway, sit down. Just got a <laughs> few more minutes. Anyway, what he did, he piled up this good soil, and then he got all the the high school and the football team when he could get them to spread that mulch out. He got all the tree trimmers done for the mulch field, and he makes peaches every year. What? One year, Fredericksburg froze out because it got bare soil under the tree. Then the soil stayed too warm, and it got warm early. And the temperature came up, and the trees bloomed. And then a freeze came and knocked the blooms off. Trees, cliff trees, stayed cool because no temperature could come out of the soil. They bloomed later. He made peaches. I went over to get me a bushel of peaches. Beck said, uh, Cliff said, Beck had to be $80. I <laughs> That's what he was getting for his peaches. Nobody else had peaches. Wow. He had beautiful peaches. No diseases, no insects, no sprays, and no water. 1,200 peach trees. 100% organic. Growing them under 12 inches of tree trimming mulch. Pretty simple. Isn't it? Now let me show you the best part of this whole program. I uh, put in a compost yard right across the fence on I-10, right across the fence from uh, uh, Grounding Ferris Industries, that big landfill, BFI landfill. And I know the manager over there, so I told him I was going to intercept all the brush because I need to grind brush for mulch. But I was going to hire his grinder to come grind whenever he had a load. He said, Beck, I would love that. He said, there's times that I've got that tree sitting around a month or two because we don't have enough grinding. <clears throat> and he said, I can really save time. So uh, I... When I got him over to grind, I kept moving the grinding with the grinder forward, so he would uh, uh, one big long rope. Right. And at that time, Coca-Cola Bottling Company came to me, and they said they had two of these 5,000-gallon tankers <clears throat> of uh, outdated Coke, syrup water, sugar water, stuff like that. They needed spray water because it was so acid. It would eat up the, the sewer line. Wow. And I got thinking, man, that'd be good stuff. All that sugar and everything. So I got thinking, well, what the guy's going to want for it? Before I said anything, he said, Beck, I'll give you $50 a load. Just let me spray it on something. I said, well, we can handle that. So here he's paying me. So I want to make it real easy for him. So I brought my irrigation pipe from the farm, and I laid it on top of that mulch pile. And you see a sprinkler? I made some special sprinklers so it goes straight up in there. A bunch of little holes, PVC caps. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> all we had to do was hook this hole to it, <clears throat> cut his pump on, and start pumping. Well, after about two and a half weeks, those caps were getting plugged up. There's trash, there's some trash in it. And I and an employer was up there knocking the trash out of the caps and screwing them back on. That pot was hot, couldn't hardly work, walk on it. 
So Bob went home, got that long thermometer, and stuck it down in there, 188 degrees. Whoa. Now, if you read the books, they tell you, don't let it get over 140. You'll ask you, you're on the bullshit. <laughs> See what the microbes are doing? They made it 188 degrees. That's what they wanted. <clears throat> they had all that energy. They just kept working. <clears throat> Temperature didn't hurt them. Right. They were a thermophilic microbe. Made excellent compost. Excellent mulch. Actually, I just use it as mulch because, well, I didn't want to screen it. I could screen the fines out and I had good compost. We just sold it as mulch because it's so pretty and black, it's so rich. Anyway, when I mentioned that thing's hot enough to bake a turkey, about oh, eight, ten days later, old Bob called me. He said, Beck, I've got to show you something on top of this pile where we were, we've been spraying that coat. We got up there and he started digging. I mean, the steam was coming out. And he dug up the 10 pound turkey. <laughs> And since then, this is about the fourth turkey we baked, and this is a 13-pound sweet potato uh, wow. I grew and baked. Wow. Now, the 10-pound uh, turkey is 13-pound sweet potato. Actually, the turkey on this time was slightly overbaked. Uh, I think we baked 18 hours, and the turkey should only have 16 hours. But the sweet potato really could have used 20 hours because the center of it wasn't baked yet. It got a little, little refinement. Now, you hear a lot of people talk about like, right. I've tried it, the stuff works. If you've got compost, not with kind of fertilizer, but it's good. If you're using compost, it works. Or good organic soil. Well, people are always bringing me, bringing me their, uh, their new inventions, their fancy potions, you know, all kinds of special microbes and stimulators and all kinds of stuff. And I'll try them. They all work to some degree. So I always try them. I will get uh, three containers, equal potting soil and all of them. This one I get, I put equal seed, little dipper seed, exactly the same. The middle one I'll just give water. This one I'll put their product according to directions in the same amount of water. And this one I'll use molasses in the same <laughs> amount of water. See what molasses does. But remember, I got compost in there. This is my potting soil with all the goodies. You know, it's rock phosphate and, and uh, green sand and everything else. But you see, now molasses, what it does, it's an energy for the microbial activity. Now, when you kick the microbes in gear, they can make everything available to the plants and really work it out. Once in a while, people stuff, they, it all does some good. But if you don't have the molasses with it, you ain't going to do it. Put molasses in it, they will probably do pretty good too. It was in my potting soil. I know it would do good. <laughs> See, it didn't hardly, but it did beat the control a little bit. It did beat a little bit. There's a the cotton plant. Where'd that lady go? I guess she figured she was too late. Probably. Well, she can catch it online. Yeah. It is online? I'll, I'll put this online. Oh, oh. <laughs> the whole thing. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Anyway, you can edit it and everything, can't you? I could. Well, whatever you want to do. I mean, you want to make it shorter, or cut out some of these boys and stuff. <laughs> anyway, and give me a copy of it. Okay. Yeah, I'll pay for it. Yeah. Sure. You gotta come see my place sometime. I'll just tour you around. Okay, is this the one out at Evans Road? or? Yeah, Evans Road. Show you my home and garden area. I'll give you a business card with my phone address in it. Sure. Anyway, uh, uh, years ago I was up in Lubbock giving a talk, and this uh, farmer and his wife asked Del and I to spend the night at their house. So that's a whole lot better than going home again. Anyway, the girls fixed supper, and we ate and cleaned up the dishes, and we were sitting around the table talking, and all of a sudden, the wife jumped up and run. She got some pictures, and she, she showed me this picture, and I said, my gosh, lady, your cotton's all wilted. <clears throat> she says, that's not our cotton. She says, here's our cotton. I said, yeah, you're gonna try to tell me this is a different year. I mean, this is the same year. She said, now, from not only the same year, it was the same day within the same few minutes. She said, I was walking and meeting my husband in the field. And I happened to look over the neighbor's cot, and it's all wilted. <laughs> she said, this is just across the dirt road, 70 feet away. She said, I looked back at my cotton, our cotton, and it's beautiful. So she said, the first thing I did was went to the house and got the camera and snapped both pictures. Then I went to meet my husband, she said, I'll show people these pictures. I said, ah, you're not kidding me. She said, no. My husband said, that's right now. He said, this goes on all the time. Huh. I said, well, you're going to have to tell me why there's a difference here. 
He said, well, I graduated from a &M. He said, they taught me how to farm. He said, the best thing they taught me was how to keep records so you know where you're going. He said, 